video, I'm delving into a topic that's all too often shrouded in silence. I'll be looking at mental health and the perimenopause and menopause. And watch until the end of this video as I'll share my experience of a surgical menopause. Let's start by looking at anxiety. Now, when most people think about the perimenopause and menopause, they tend to picture hot flushes and night sweats. But it's often the mental health symptoms that really pack a punch. Let's meet Kate, a remarkable partner at a thriving legal firm. For years, she's been the picture of mental steadiness, strong, hardworking and always ready to tackle any challenge that comes her way. But as she reached the age of 45, something unexpected happened. Kate found herself feeling anxious in situations where she used to feel perfectly at ease. The thought of talking to colleagues or meeting with clients filled her with a sense of dread. And even something as simple as answering the phone sent her heart racing. It was like a confidence had vanished into thin air, leaving her feeling lost and unsure of herself. Kate had never felt more alone. Well, Kate's not alone, as 51% of the population will experience the perimenopause and menopause. Perimenopause is when the female hormones oestrogen, progesterone and testosterone start to decline. And the menopause is classed as one year since your last period. Kate was feeling the effects of a decline in hormones. When oestrogen levels start to drop, it can dampen your mood. Then there's progesterone, your mood specialist, keeping you calm, relaxed and ready for a good night's sleep. So when progesterone levels plummet, it can trigger anxiety, depression, mood swings and insomnia. And it may surprise you that men don't have the monopoly on testosterone. Women produce testosterone too. In fact, we actually produce more testosterone than oestrogen. Now, I like to think of testosterone as your mental cheerleader. It boosts memory, keeps you sharp and helps you maintain physical strength. But when those levels dip, you can find yourself feeling stressed, less focused and struggling to sleep. In fact, oestrogen and testosterone are really important to maintain the function of your brain. Let's look at brain fog. Mary is an accomplished accountant, known for her meticulous attention to detail and sharp analytical mind. At the age of 35, she's faced an unexpected challenge, surgical menopause. Due to ovarian tumours, Mary had both ovaries removed, thrusting her into an immediate menopause. As she navigated this new chapter, Mary encountered a symptom that caught her completely off guard, brain fog. Since the surgery, she found herself becoming increasingly forgetful, struggling to recall names and relying heavily on to-do lists to keep herself organised. Now, the ovaries play a crucial role in hormone production, particularly oestrogen and testosterone. With their removal, Mary experienced an immediate and drastic decline in hormone levels. Now, the surgery successfully removed the tumours, but the sudden loss of hormones proved to be deeply destabilising for Mary. Now, early menopause is more common than you might expect. One in every 100 women go through menopause before they are 40. One in every 1,000 women go into menopause before they are 30. And one in every 20,000 women go into menopause before they are 20. Far too frequently we view menopause through the narrow lens of midlife. Yet for tens of thousands of women, menopause arrives years or even decades earlier than anticipated. Now, early menopause can arise from various conditions such as premature ovarian insufficiency or from surgeries to remove cancer, fibroids, cysts, tumours or endometriosis. Let's look at depression, another common symptom. Meet Lucy, a vibrant and cheerful woman who's always lived life to the fullest. Days were filled with laughter, regular trips abroad, nights out with friends. But suddenly, like a dark cloud rolling in on a sunny day, Lucy's mood took a drastic turn. 
It was as if she'd been engulfed by quicksand. And what made it all the more difficult was that Lucy couldn't pinpoint a reason why she was so depressed. There were no childhood traumas and no poor relationships, yet she found herself unable to shake off the depression. Sadly, this often results in a prescription for antidepressants. In fact, one in four women have been prescribed antidepressants for perimenopause or menopause symptoms. But the research by the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, also known as NICE, has shown that antidepressants do not help with low mood during menopause if you haven't already been diagnosed with depression. So antidepressants really should not be prescribed for people like Lucy. NICE guidelines recommend hormone replacement therapy, also known as HRT. And for low sexual desire, testosterone can also be considered if HRT alone is not sufficient. Experiencing low mood and feelings of depression is quite common during the perimenopause and menopause. Alongside these, you might notice a range of other psychological symptoms like low self-esteem, reduced motivation, anxiety, irritability, and even panic attacks. And it's not uncommon for concentration levels to dip and energy levels might feel lower than usual too. So it's not surprising these symptoms can be mistaken for depression, leading to well-meaning but potentially incorrect prescriptions for antidepressants. A 2021 study found that one in five menopausal women passed on the opportunity to go for a promotion. 19% reduced their hours at work and 22% resigned. The workforce is actually losing experienced women due to the menopause. And women between the ages of 45 and 55 have the highest suicide rate of any female age group. For every 100,000 women in that age group, seven will take their own life. That's almost double the suicide rate for 15 to 19 year olds. These are really frightening statistics. Now, it's important to remember that not all women experience perimenopause or menopause symptoms, and that's perfectly normal. Just as every woman's journey through life is unique, so too is her experience with the perimenopause and menopause. While some may encounter symptoms such as hot flashes, anxiety, depression or fatigue, others may transition through this phase with no symptoms. Every woman's body responds differently to hormonal changes. And not experiencing symptoms is a positive aspect of this variability. My experience. Now, I've never self-disclosed on a YouTube video before. I'm a very private person, very much an introvert, but I think we should all be talking about the perimenopause and menopause. Women are committing suicide because we're not talking about it enough. It affects 51% of the population, and we shouldn't feel ashamed or embarrassed to talk about it. It's a natural process. So my story. In 2023, I had emergency surgery to remove both ovaries and fallopian tubes due to tumours. This sent me straight into a surgical menopause. The impact was instant. My brain was no longer sharp. I felt anxious. I couldn't sleep, and my energy was on the floor. I felt like I'd been slammed into a brick wall. I didn't recognise the woman I had become. Now, I always thought that I would manage the menopause naturally. I've always been into healthy eating, meditation, I practice yoga, and I'm obsessional about maintaining good gut health. And of course, I've been a psychotherapist for 30 years, so there are loads of tools and techniques in my toolkit, but I didn't recognise myself. So I did a lot of research and I eventually decided to go on HRT and within days I felt like the old me again. A lot of the worry about HRT actually traces back to the Women's Health Initiative study back in 2002. The initial findings were released to the media before they were fully analysed, leading to panic and a sharp decline in HRT usage worldwide. But once the dust settled and experts took a closer look, and they found the study was actually flawed on many levels. This means a generation of women have been deprived of HRT, largely as a result of the misinterpretation of the data. 
So thankfully, there are now a lot of robust research studies showing something quite remarkable, actually, and quite reassuring, that women on HRT tend to be healthier and have fewer health issues than women who aren't using HRT. Now, just to be clear, I'm not pushing HRT on anyone. I just want to suggest that you do your own research um, I think Dr. Louise Newson's um, website is amazing. Um, Dr. Havers on YouTube is just, just doing some incredible work. And Davina McCall has written an amazing book called Menopausing. Now, they are all intelligent, well-informed women. And I think that's a great starting point if you want to do some more research about HRT and other treatments for the perimenopause and menopause. Now, I think it's interesting. I thought I would go through the menopause with ease because I look after myself. I now think I was a, perhaps a little bit naive. Um, obviously, it's a surgical menopause, so it's very different than a natural menopause. Um, but menopause is not an balance that can be corrected by good diet or exercise. Um, obviously, looking after yourself helps. It helps a lot. But menopause is actually a hormone deficiency, not a hormone imbalance. This means that no matter how well you eat, sleep or exercise, no matter how well you look after yourself, you can't get back your lost hormones. Now, as a psychotherapist, one of my concerns is that many mental health professionals don't receive any training on menopause and its impact on mental health. This gap in training can lead to misunderstandings or misdiagnosis. So it's crucial that mental health professionals recognise that symptoms such as anxiety or depression may actually be linked to the perimenopause or menopause. So if you have any concerns about your health or well-being during the perimenopause or menopause, it's always a good idea to discuss them with your healthcare provider. And you may need to advocate for yourself. If you think your symptoms are due to the perimenopause or menopause, mention it. Don't wait for your healthcare provider to ask the question. And if you're not getting anywhere, see someone else or ask for a second opinion. So if you're a woman navigating the perimenopause or menopause, or if you're the partner, friend, colleague or loved one supporting women through these changes, it's important to remember that you're not alone in this journey. Whether you're experiencing the symptoms firsthand or providing crucial support and understanding, your role is invaluable. So together, I hope we can create a supportive and empathic community where women feel empowered to embrace this natural phase with confidence. I look forward to seeing you soon.